Welcome back to Saints Row 2. So now that Hitman's done, it is technically time for us to start killing cars instead. However, I was interrupted by yet another pushback, and I really didn't want to be. I just wanted to start gathering cars, but no, the Ronin just had to make a big deal. And I say the Ronin, but I actually died several times when trying to do the pushback, and every time uh, I got a different pushback. So, yeah, I had to do this a few times. I think sometimes it was the Brotherhood. But either way, I uh, had a lot of dumb deaths when all I wanted to do was chop shop stuff. Yeah, you, you, you two guys keep them busy. No, I'm, I'm ignoring you. I don't care. Uh, but yeah, here's the successful one where I'm not killed by stupid things. Like doing a cool jump that was immediately followed by the car pursuing me. Also doing a cool jump, killing me instantly. <laughs> you know, I like the motorcycles, but they're not great to take into a fight, is the thing. They're, they're really not good. Uh, they, they provide basically no protection. <laughs> Which, you know, that's why I usually take the Saints Mobile. But like, I, w I was planning on going to Chop Shop, this wasn't supposed to be a thing. <laughs> Now granted, uh, once the dice are rolled for a pushback, uh, it's just sort of set in stone. So, technically, I did know about this pushback, but I'm not cheating. I left that moment with a motorcycle before I actually knew about the pushback. And damn it, I was gonna stick to it. Taking the damn motorcycle. <laughs> not using my future knowledge for my own gains. That would be disrespectful to this video game that doesn't care one way or the other what I do. As long as I survive, that's all that matters. So yeah, this is probably the least aggressive the AI got in all of them. In all of these attempts, um, I am, I'm being shot at significantly less than I was in certain other runs. Uh, so... Not actually too much preamble for this episode. We're kind of uh, gonna be getting in pretty quickly uh, to everything. But in the meantime, I did actually want to uh, mention. Oh yeah, we can't buy that yet because that that one's actually stupid expensive. Uh, I want to mention some facts about Stillwater because I don't really have a better time to mention it. But, like, the these things amuse me. But the lead-up for Saints Row 3, uh, there were, like, little, uh, there, there's, like, recaps, uh, for, uh, the early Saints, the Saints in this game, and then it gets into Saints Row of the third game. Uh, but it also includes just random facts, just, you know, for flavor. Uh, I can mention two of them. The, the last one is, I guess, kind I'm of a spoiler. Sure those lyrics Not aren't really. what I think they are. Damn Scottish bro. This next band is awesome. No, seriously, they rock. Shipwreck with House of Cards, next on Pirate Radio. Yeah, House of Cards, alright. Anyway, though, yeah, so. Uh, the two I want to mention are, despite record court appearances, the only crime anyone has been convicted of is littering. They came so close with Gat. So, so very close, but they missed the mark. Uh, and the other one, which is one of my favorite lampshades to explain why things are the way they are. So, of course, uh, this is a game where you can just drive around mowing people down if you want to. And, you know, typically in these cases, you're, you're not going to want to, you know, kill anyone who isn't just an adult, right? You know, even if you're going on a rampage, that'd be a bit much. So Saints Row explains this as Stillwater having a city code that prevents the public display of children and animals. <laughs> so it's not it's not just that they don't appear, which everybody would accept anyway, but they go so far as to just say it is actively illegal. <laughs> city code says no. No children or pets. They're not allowed to even show their faces. And that's why you don't see any kids or cats around the city. 
<laughs> a, because it would be bad just in general, but B, they did think of a good joke to explain that. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. So what's this business proposal you mentioned? You know, a woman getting ahead in the medical field is an uphill battle. I don't care what anyone says. I may be a badass, but I don't think I can change the way an entire profession thinks about gender. If I get in the brilliant book of world records for most patients served, I think that would send a message that women are just as proficient, if not more so, than their male counterparts. All right. Where are you going? You said you were planning on treating more patients, so I figured you wanted me to hurt some people. Oh, God, no. Surgery takes a lot of time. I need you to fake multiple injuries so I can treat you faster than I normally could. Doesn't cheating to get a world record kind of undercut your point? Eh, I'll live. Just checking. <laughs> But yeah, that's it. That's done. Now we can show them how women get it done. Women are just as capable of insurance fraud as men are. More female criminals. I don't know if the clapping came through there, but trust me. You, you know the clapping emoji was there, right? You know this. You accept this fact. Anyway, we're done with that. I guess I could have started the next Ronin mission, because we'll technically be doing that today, but I opted to go for the next Somni mission instead. So, uh, right. Production has been going pretty well. But I can't imagine that even if he accepted it with grace, that Mr. Sunshine is all that happy about his getting his ear cut off. Yeah, since he did accept it with grace, I'm sure he blames us more than his boss. Alright, show it to me. How much does he hate my guts? Mr. Sunshine, come on, man. Where's the shipment? There is no shipment. This isn't funny, man. I couldn't agree more. I don't care how much you jack up the price. Just give me the dust! There's nothing for me to sell. You promised that another shipment was coming in. And there was. But the Saints stole it. Fuck you then! Where are they slinging? I'll buy from them! No. You will not. You are upset and want your drugs. This I understand. But there are other solutions. Like what? You all will go and steal the drugs from the Saints. Are you fucking crazy? They'll kill us all. Perhaps. But if they don't, you will be taken care of for quite some time. We... we get to keep what we take? Oh, yes. I hate this standing around shit. Why can't something exciting happen? What? I can't hear you. This exciting enough for you? Shawnee got fucking shot. Okay, so here's a big raid. We're getting the dust I feel out of like here. this is a very Saints truck. Row 1 mission. Like, just everything about it. 
that we'll see just makes me think this could have happened in game one. So this is just an enemy gauntlet. We just gotta kill all of the homeless in Stillwater, I guess. Oh god. The, them and their access to Molotovs. Uh, but yeah, no, there are just so many of them. I can't imagine there's gonna be that many after we're done here. See, when people say they're going to solve homeless populations, you might think, oh, that means housing, right? No, they usually mean something like this, having a, some kind of gang blow them up with rocket launchers. That's why you always have to pay attention to people's wording. And you know, people always try to skirt around things, just like, oh, it, I never lied, I just didn't say the truth explicitly. But, okay. Don't know how that worked out. Oh well. Uh, anyway, the. Oh. I should be glad you didn't go after Pierce, and where are you going? I guess that guy was retreating, but whatever. Who's gonna fucking narc to Geneva? Nobody on the Saints, that's for sure. God, I just. Probably shouldn't have parked my car there, all things considered. You know, I am throwing a lot of rockets around. Maybe it's a bad idea to have the Mark V in the line of fire. Could potentially be a bad idea. <laughs> Every time that happens, it just seems so brutal. Alright, so yeah, we don't have an on-screen timer, but we do get the timer sound, which... I guess I'm grateful for that. Oh, good job, idiots. Alright, part two. We've got a truck and we've got to load it. And, um, you probably don't want to be here. You like, I don't know if you truck. haven't noticed all of the other off. corpses so far, but, uh, this is really a bad time for you to be working. Okay, looks like he cleared. So yeah, uh, Pierce and Shandi are going to be tossing the boxes into the truck. I mean, I guess we don't have a lot of time, but we could be a little more careful with the product, right? Hey Shandi, I forget, do the light bulbs come with the drugs, or is that sold separately? I feel like it's a thing- oh, you and your Molotovs. Why don't you get married or something if you love them so, so much? Uh, but yeah, I, I feel like the, the light bulbs are part of the deal, right? Like, back in that one cutscene, Shandi just broke open the light bulb and lit it, right? I mean, I could be misremembering. But I think it has to come prepackaged in the light bulb. I don't know, maybe that's part of the joke. Maybe I am supposed to be remembering that right now. I feel like a good joke you don't actually draw attention to. Pierce, that I'm now ruining by here. drawing attention to it. But look, I'm sorry. Somebody just starts throwing boxes of light bulbs into a truck. I do get a little bit anxious about it, even if it is supposed to be a joke. Alright, so, Saints Mobile is... not here? Alright, I don't know who keeps taking that thing back in early, but this is way too early. So yeah, this is the most Saints Row 1 part of the mission to me. Uh, we have to escort the truck, and much like what Troy would do in the first game, he will stop if you get too far away. And this seems like a bad thing. Somebody help scrape this thing out. I don't want it here. Uh, anyway though, yeah, if you get too far away from the truck, then it just stops. Uh, Pierce is completely helpless without you refuses to just keep going. Even though that would be a better idea, because I'm kind of in a piece of junk car. So now I think I should be taking this at my pace, and, you know, all we're dealing with is the homeless. They're not exactly known for being the best militia. I mean, they've got firearms, but it's still water. How would you not have firearms in still water? The kids probably do. Don't know that for sure because I haven't seen them around here, but what can assume? 
Alright, well, uh, yeah, pretty much at this point we're just waiting for red dots to appear. I guess the big challenge of this is that, of course, since this is the homeless and not a rival gang, uh, their cars are far more innocuous and hard to spot, especially if you're doing this at night. Which I think you have to, because we started in the day, right? I think pre-mission it was daytime and now it's night, so that's probably on purpose. Pretty sure the ending cutscene's at night, too. So that is probably supposed to happen. Oh dear, uh, get out of here. Uh, <laughs> Pierce, you really don't have to wait, you're kind of in danger. Oh but yeah, that's all on purpose, I'm sure. So that's pretty much the toughest thing. And of course, if you destroy too many, you know, regular cars that go to a garage because their owners do have a house. So if you kill too many of them, that's when the police care. And you know, the zombie are trying their best to, you know, keep their hands off this one. With Ed's eye. This is 420 Radio! Done 420 Radio with Siggy! You better fucking pay up, you little shit! I know where you live! <laughs> Cooler man! Hey, looks like I'm wound out to follow my boy Nitcha Man's advice! He can make guns out here on Fat 20 Radio! What an intro. Uh, but yeah, uh, since the Somni aren't here, you'll want to do your best to avoid the police being summoned. Oh, well, I said the Somni aren't here, but we are technically in zombie territory and I did run them over, so I've made that a problem. It doesn't have to be a problem. Neither do the police either, so yeah, do your best to not kill too many people. Only kill the homeless, because that's the set of people the police don't care about. Which is very realistic. Sunshine. Give me the dust. Fine. Ah! Where's Sunshine? What does it matter? You're gonna kill me anyway. I'm in no rush. He hangs out at the old meat packing plant. See, was that so hard? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that. Uh, is the final homeless person in Stillwater, I guess. We, we killed all the rest. We, we did kill a small army of people. So, uh, we now know where Mr. Sunshine hangs out. We probably don't want to take too long to go get him, but, you know, after the night we've had, I think we should probably just, you know, go to a bar, have a nice night, just, you know, drink our problems away and handle Sunshine next time we meet up. Pay no attention to the Ronin mission marker, that definitely doesn't matter. All I'm saying is that we don't know how long Gad is going to be laid out. And you're willing to make a noble sacrifice and take his place? Someone's got to step up. Trust me. Gat'll be up and running in no time. And if he's not? Then we have bigger problems. What's up? How badly do you want the man who hurt Johnny Gat? Who is this? Junichi will be at Kanto tonight. This is our chance for revenge. <laughs> our chance? Who the fuck are you? Where are you going? I'm taking out the son of a bitch that killed Aisha. I like that the boss acknowledges Aisha instead of Gats. You know, on account of her being dead and all. Alright, so, Kanto! One day we will find the Kanto connection, and that day is today. 
Let's get Junichi's ass. Even though, out of everybody, I don't know, I kind of like him. He's, he's you know, kind of nice. Sure, he did kill Aisha and wounded Gat, but, you know, we're on opposite sides. These things kind of happen. We're gonna kill him for it, sure, but, you know, he's nice overall. Good attitude. But it's actually Shogo himself who gave us that call, which means... That boy is such a little prick, just... He really is that petty. That he is actively giving his enemy the information needed to kill one of his major players. We're gonna take out one of his lieutenants tonight. Because he directly told us where he'd be. Because he's that much of a petty bitch. Die with some honor. Alright, shortcut scene. Uh, we do, however, have a mission that will probably last a lot longer. Because this is the first time we have sword combat. Like, proper sword combat, not kind of just wailing at people. So, there's this whole counter mechanic that comes up sometimes. Uh, specifically for missions. And it's important here because... We can kill all the other guys regularly. Uh, but... Jinichi will only be countered. Not only that, he's also got a very specific window. Less specific than that guy's window, that guy was easy. Uh, so yeah, if you do it too soon, uh, he will just grab you and throw you. And obviously if you throw too late, you just get stabbed. Yeah, see, you like that. Yeah, I know, I was trying to counter him. Although also, he can just throw you if you're hanging out too close to him, so do be wary of that. So yeah, this one took me a few tries. It's not really that hard of a fight. It's just, this is a new mechanic, and it's a little sloppy in its implementation. I don't know. See, the main issue is, stylistically, they're kind of backed into a corner. Because normally you just get around this sort of thing by having just like a flash of light or something. You know, something very fancy that shows like, this this is where you need to go. Make it a timing thing purely, and not a guess in time thing. But I don't feel like that would fit with how this game looks for the most part. And it could be wrong, but yeah, just like... I cannot imagine there being some kind of spark animation to really just show... This is where you need to stab him now. It's a bit of a shame, because this is kind of a cool fight. It's just really hard to read what the game's trying to put down. That's the biggest issue. I just couldn't get the best gauge on Jinichi because... His animations do differ a little bit, but... You do need a very specific reaction time to him. Which means it's very easy to misread in what little time you're given. Yeah, again, these guys aren't nearly as bad. Easy enough. Oh, I am not really nailing it there. Also, we're only kicking these guys now, which doesn't help me. There we go. We did kill that lady. Alright. Wasn't free. Did did have some struggle against that guy. But yeah, neat idea. I just wish there was like one mission that lets you figure out how to do this a little easier beforehand. Just, you know, give me a better feel for how this mechanic works before the big fight with it. Is everything okay, Father? He's dead, Shogo. Junichi is dead. And all I'm left with is you. Is that so bad? It's worse than you could ever imagine. Father, I... Leave me in peace, Shogo. I'll make you proud, Father. I'll finish what Junichi started. I'll kill Gat. I'll... Do whatever you want, Shogo. Just 
do it away from me. If it were anyone other than Shogo, I might feel a little bad for him. Because, god damn. That. M I just stabbed somebody to death, and that was the most cutting thing I've seen in this episode. Anyway, now we get Ronin Melee, and also, unique to Gentlemen of the Row, we get to wield two katanas. That's right, we can get cooler now that we can dual wield. Obviously, we have to shout dual wield while doing that. <laughs> That's right, for killing Jinichi, we know how to dual wield now. It's truly, that is the greatest prize of all. Oh, I guess Aisha's Avenge too. That's also good. Hope you appreciate that, Aisha. But seriously, appreciate more the fact that I can wield two swords. That's just cool. This is the killing on the dance floor. Another killing on the dance floor. What? This is the killing on the dance floor. Another killing on the dance floor. What? This is the killing on the dance floor. Another killing on the dance floor. What? This is the killing on the dance floor. Another killing on the dance floor. What?